Welcome to Camp Cookout Adventures. Tonight is a night of many firsts. I have a buggy full of brand new gear and it's still in this packaging and a lovely location to try it all out in. We're going to set up a cheap teepee tent with a stove jack alongside a Winnerwell titanium backpackers stove. I'm going to spend the night out here with this brand new gear and hopefully cook up a delicious Chinese curry on the backpack stove. Let's see what unfolds. Literally. Now I've managed to get permission tonight from a private landowner. It's a fantastic site, but they've asked me to keep it quiet, so I'm not going to disclose my location. I've picked up here the Long Geek 320 two-person TP tent. Now the great thing about this is that it was £110 from Amazon, and it comes with a stove jack installed. So the idea is tonight is to pair this TP tent up with the fantastic Winnerwell titanium backpacker stove which has got its own flue and spark arrestor and hopefully have a hot tent experience. So as you can see, it's all brand new in its packaging. I've not tried to set this thing up yet. I picked up along with this thing, the ground sheet as well, which I thought was pretty important for our climate in the UK. So I'm fighting against time with light now. So I think I should probably get cracking and figure out how this thing goes. Let's not throw the instructions away just yet. This is the Hikeman ground sheet that came paired with the tent. It comes in this little bag straight out of its original packaging, along with these ground stakes. So next up is the tent. It comes in this cover, wrapped up with a Velcro strap. That looks like part of the stove jack. And in here is a various pack of guy ropes and ground sticks. Got another bag here. That's got the central pole within it. And the rest of it just looks to be the tarp of the tent. So there's only four stages for setup. It says stake out all the corners, then put the pole up in the middle, adjust the ground pegs, and then attach the guy lines. So it should be simple and quick. Let's see. I found the door and I want that located here. So that's where I'm going to put it. On the inside of the tarp, there's these little loop holes is where our ground stakes go through. So I'm just going to loosely pin them down right now. I've had to break out the head torch already. I've only been here 15 minutes. So that is the central pole. It's the same both ends. So now I've got to mic that up in the middle somehow. Well, that looks something like it, doesn't it? So we have a whole load of loose guy lines, which I'm going to have to go around and individually attach to each of these positions all around the points. So that's all these guy lines tied on now. They've got a plastic slip joint on them as well for tensioning. So now all I've got to do is go around all of those guy lines and attach them both at top and bottom. These ones are already on the bottom of the tarp and peg them out so they're nice and tight. Come check it out. There we are. It was advertised as a two person tent, but it actually said one to four. I certainly wouldn't want to put four people in there. That would be very, very snug. You have to be very good friends. So now that's done, let's check out that stove jack. See how that's going to work. But essentially, I'll roll that existing flap up, stick this one in there, and poke the flue up through, and we should be good to go. That's the stove jack just velcroed on there in place. So now I'm going to set up my titanium stove. Okay, so now for the cool bit. This is the Winnerwell Titanium Backpacker Stove. It comes in its own little pouch that weighs just under a kilo and it's incredibly thin. In the bag, you get this little pouch which contains two titanium ground stakes. This top part is your spark arrestor. This is your titanium sheet material. It's super thin. It rolls out. This will become your chimney itself and it holds its shape with these little titanium rings. So we'll roll that out in a minute. And then the other half is the foldable stove itself. It's tiny.
What's great about this stove in particular, apart from its weight and its size, is that it comes completely assembled. There's no other parts which you have to bolt together or screw together. You just plonk it together as it is, flip these little clips across, and that's job done. Look at that. And that is our tiny tent stove. That took, what, all of 30 seconds? Magic. So we're gonna roll out our chimney now out of this titanium sheet. I have watched a couple of videos on people who already have this product and it does look kind of tricky. This sheet material is so thin, it's actually really sharp. Oh, the little firebox is just heavy enough to keep that where it's at. That's good. What opportunistic timing this is. Got me mate Tim from Cornwall EDC. Hello Timmy boy. Hello. All right. All right, so that's the spark arrestor. I think that's it. It has kinked quite a bit on that first roll. I think I probably could have done a better job of that. So this is the first time trying out a hot tent experience. So I am very aware of the safety aspect of this. This is a fireproof tarp pad that I got off of Amazon as well. Plan is I'm gonna put that underneath it and in between, I'm gonna whack this stone underneath as well, just to help space out any heat being distributed down through the mat. I've been looking for an excuse to use this thing. Tim talked me into getting one. Is it the Gerber strong arm, Tim? It is indeed. So I'm just going to put a little X. Oh my goodness, is that sharp. It's just a little cross cut right in the center of this stove jack. Put that bad boy back in its sheath. I'm poking any more holes in the tent. Okay, that's in. It's not going to touch any of my tarp. Got condensation going on in here already. Hopefully set this thing up and that will blast that out. Fire extinguisher at the ready. Let's set this puppy on fire. I brought all the toys out tonight, so Tim's having a go at the SOG camp hatchet. It's incredibly sharp, but it's also quite small and quite lightweight. So it's not really designed for splitting hardwood stuff. Which is beautifully sharp. Fluffy stuff ready for fire lighting. Well, with thanks to Tim and his lovely lady Megan, we've got some homemade fire starters there, which is cotton wool pads with, I believe, Megan's best Yankee candle wax. Whether she knows about that or not, I don't know. Shh! <laughs> Get me shot! <laughs> Look at that, Tim's own brand fire lighter. It smells handsome. It does smell very nice as well, actually. So you can expect to see them on Amazon in the next two weeks. Got ferro rod here and the Gerber. Let's see if we can get her going. Ah, oh, first go. Look at that. Stunning, mate. Now this is the hairy part really. Having had no experience with hot tents or these little stoves, I'm just gonna monitor it for a little bit and make sure it's safe. I've got fire extinguisher at the ready just in case. But so far it looks lovely. It's been going for about five minutes now. Starting to get some bluing on the top. So far, so good with the old stove jack. It's drawing really well. It is super toasty as you'd expect. This here is something I call Chorlix. It's half hot chocolate, half Horlix in case you couldn't guess. I'll finish it off because I'm extra fancy and that's how we go on Camp Cookout Adventures. With a bit of Baileys in it. Oh yeah. Lovely, thank you very much. Baileys in your hot chocolate. Such extravagance. Mm. Okay, so tonight's dinner, Chinese chicken curry. I've got chicken thighs, which I'm gonna slice up. In my veggies, I've got a single sliced brown onion, I've got mushrooms, and I've got peas. And this paste, it's goldfish brand Chinese style curry. It's absolutely fantastic. If you like Chinese style curry, that is bang on. It may as well just be the takeaway sauce. It's a bit overkill there, isn't it really? Sesame oil in the pot, chicken. 
Now here's the test. We're going to pop that on top of our stove and see if it starts sizzling. Whack our little zebra pot on top of there. And fingers crossed in a minute or two we might... Victory! What I do need though is some hot water for my sauce. So I'm going to have to bust out the MSR Dragonfly as well to quickly heat some up. While my water is heating over on the Dragonfly, I am now going to add all of my veggies to the pot. So I've got sliced mushrooms, got diced onions and peas, which I love in a curry. Now that the veggies are in, I'm also going to add my curry paste. Well, it smells absolutely wonderful in here. This little stove, I'm so impressed with it. It is the perfect temperature for stewing. So that little zebra pot on top has bubbled away happily now for over two hours. And my dinner's ready. Let's start with that in the bowl. Bit of the seasoning on top. I've even completed my menu with prawn crackers. I can't wait to get stuck into this, I'm starving. There we go, is our Chinese chicken curry, camp cookout adventures style. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, perfect. Oh. That is absolutely delicious. And all cooked on the Winterwell Titanium Backpacking Stove. It can be done. Chicken curry and prawn crackers. Magic. Check out this banana. <laughs> Melted chocolate baked banana. Lush. Cheers. Mmm. Yep. That'll do it. Mmm. Divine. Well, I'm in two minds as to what to do really. I think that I could probably just sleep with this wool blanket. I don't really feel the need to set up my sleeping bag and air mat. Now that could be a massive mistake. But I think I've got enough layers on to just wrap myself up in this wool blanket and rough it. If I do start to get cold, I can always get my sleeping bag out, couldn't I? I'm just gonna sit here, drink my Chorlix and wait for this wood burner to eat up the last of its fuel and then I'm going to try and get some shut eye. See you guys in the morning. Good morning. It's ten past six. It's seven degrees Celsius. Oh, I slept really well. I didn't even put my sleeping mat out last night. I ended up sleeping just on my wool blanket with my sleeping bag. I didn't bother with the mat. I was perfectly comfortable. Oh, well, it was a really great experience trying out this hot tent for the first time. I'm delighted with how my meal went last night. And it was super warm and toasty.
when I first went to sleep. It kind of felt like it kept its temperature well for a considerable time. I was very tired. I fell asleep very quickly. It would be nice to have a bit more of a lie in, but unfortunately I've got to get that little buggy back. And it's going to take me a minute or two to pack everything up. So let's get cracking. Well, the ground sheet worked great. It was pretty damp last night in the end, as you can see, it's pretty boggy underfoot, but it didn't allow any moisture through or anything. And that little fireproof mat and that stone underneath the wood burner that I put, there's no damage on the mat either. So great success all in all. Thanks once again everyone for tuning in to Camp Cookout Adventures. I really hope that you enjoyed that episode. I certainly enjoyed my first experience in a hot tent. I think all the gear worked really, really well. So I'm very pleased. Especially for the money, I don't think you can go wrong. Anyway, tune in next week.